I'm starting that. <laughs> you know, the last few times I've done this, I, uh, I tend to perform barefoot, kind of have for the last whole year. It's something about my lifestyle and trying to tell people don't kill shit. And I don't know. Decide, tonight I decided to stick with socks. I guess Russ, you know, sort of inspired me. I'd wear something like that, but they don't make them in 15. So um, I thought I would start with a song I think some of you heard before. Since my field is herpetology, herpetology is technically reptiles and amphibians. And while there's no amphibians in my show, one of my childhood favorites is made famous by a famous amphibian. This is my take on that. Why are there so many folks who hate reptiles? Things that can crawl, slink, and climb. Don't they love nature? And can't they just see that it's all the big circle of life? What's so distasteful about part of the food chain? When all of it was meant to be So one day they'll find it The reptile connection The crawlers, the squeezers, and me Have you been taught to fear Things that surprise you Just doing what they're born to do all that you need is love for all of our planets and all that lives here with us too folks if you live around some of the food chain you live around all of it you see so one day they'll find it the reptile connection the crawlers the squeezers and me la da da di da da di da 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 So I want to talk about snakes. Usual question, how many people here do not like snakes? You only get snakes a dead snake. How many run get the hoe? <laughs> or the shovel? You know the hoe used to be a garden tool. <laughs> I am cheaper than any shrink, and I'm better at getting people over aphidiophobia. You know, aphidiophobia is the fear of aphidia. No. We don't read a lot. Actually, I've been accused of aphidiophilia. I feel you, feel you. <laughs> now, I'm going to start at the upper end of this this time because the other animals are going to be ones that are mistaken for this. Now, since the microphone that I'm using is on my, well, is right here. <laughs> See how close I can get to where you can hear this particular sound effect. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> we do hear it? Oh, yeah. Speculations? Yeah, that are a really good sound effect, right? He's actually from Venezuela. His name is Jesus. But most people, when they see him, pronounce it the other way. From Venezuela, the Venezuelan rattlesnake. Yes, that is the real thing. You do know what he means when he rattles his tail, right? It means you're too big to eat, back off. To him, everything too big to eat is big enough to be eaten by everything that wild eats snakes. Dogs, cats, bears, birds of prey, possums, armadillos, people, they taste like chicken. <laughs> so he's saying, back off, you're too big to eat. Usually in my case, I think he really just hates my breath. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Everybody thinks that uh, this animal is after you. 
This is actually a very, very gentle, uh, rattlesnakes in general, they're very, very gentle animals. That's what the rattle is for. It's meant to back you off. In his world, it's a simple matter of saying, look, I'm here. Because the venom is really not meant for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get in trouble. I mean, generally speaking, it's when somebody doesn't see what they're doing. Well, you know, I've already told you this, right? Eight out of 10 people were bitten by venomous snakes were trying to kill the snake at the time. And the other two were white males with an alcohol problem. <laughs> so, does everybody see him? Yeah. Good, let's hear it for Jesus. <laughs> Which brings me to another one. Now, this is actually kind of legendary in my show for many, many years. But this is a new incarnation of this particular animal. The people that had rescued him did not even know what he was. I said, oh, you don't understand. This is what's called a Central American boa. Now, you know what? Everybody assumes that uh, boas are all boa constrictors. This is a constrictor, but he's not a boa constrictor, at least not in the same sense. Let me show you what I mean about this particular guy. <laughs> Once he can find me. Come over here. Look, he's hiding. Oh, yes, here we go. Can you see me? I'm over here. Are <laughs> you distracted? Mm -hmm. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Can you see the tension mounting? Can you actually see it? It helps to know how far he can reach. His name is Mr. Happy. He used to have another name, but it's a family show. <laughs> of course, you know what boas are best at, especially the ones that live in the trees. Hanging on to the tree. No, they do not fall off the tree. Tree boas are afraid of falling. Think about it, you would be too if you lived in a tree and you had no arms and legs. Now, the hard part with him has always been getting him off the tree. Especially when there's spotlights in your eyes and you can't really see what you're reaching for. Um, I usually charge extra to bleed. Um, under here, over there, over that. You know, We're having a reptile dysfunction. <laughs> Down boy. Um, excuse me. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that's Mr. Abby. Which leads me to somebody I really want you to meet because this is what everybody assumes is a rattlesnake here in North Texas. He's big and he's bad and he's scary and he'll rattle his tail at you but there's no rattle on the end of the tail. It's a generic snake body language thing. When they rattle their tail, that means you're too big to eat, go away. If you see a big snake in your yard, it's gonna be one of these around here. You know what this is? A big snake. <laughs> a big snake. <laughs> this is a rat snake, very good. What's good about rat snakes? They eat rats. They eat rats. One dead rat snake is 300 live rats in his lifetime. Think about that the next time dad grabs the shovel. So the thing is, if you see one of these, I have two recommendations. By the way, whoop. they will do this. They'll hiss at you, they'll strike at you, they'll rattle their tail at you, but if it's all, it's, it's all bluff, there's absolutely no reason to kill it. Is this starting to remind you of a medical symbol? If you see a big snake in your yard, it's gonna be one of these, okay? Around here, it really is. Now, my counterpart in, in Austin, he'd get called out on a rat snake bite, or a rat snake call, and it would be a rattlesnake instead. Everybody thinks these are rattlesnakes when they see them around here. So if you see one, I want you to do two things. I want you to leave him alone, and I want you to name him George. Aww. It's far harder to kill a snake once his name is George. 
seriously, because of me, there are hundreds of rat snakes across this country named George. I remember that I was a, doing a convention, and there was a girl that was sort of hanging on being a groupie. Aren't you sweet? And anytime somebody would ask me what one of the snake's names was, I mean, that's kind of my multi-purpose name, so I said, oh, that's George. By the end of the day, she was like, how many snakes do you have named George? I'm like, yeah, well, it's a George Foreman thing, I guess. <laughs> now, he's actually even harder to get back in the box. Watch. You got to get the tail in the box before the head comes out. <laughs> and it is not <laughs> as easy as it was. <laughs> now, you guys down front are probably beginning to um, pick up an aroma. They have a very significant and well-developed musk gland. One of the ways to avoid being eaten in the wild is to smell really bad. Ask any skunk. So, uh, will you stop? <laughs> Which brings me to one last thing. Some of you have sometimes seen me do magic up here. I am the world's only stand-up comic snake handling magician. <laughs> I am a prestidigitating herpetological humorist. <laughs> so, and really in both cases, I'm using it to help my, tell my story. And the story is don't kill the snake. There's no reason to kill the snake. If it's venomous, that's the most likely way to get bit, which is about a $45,000 mistake in this country. Yeah, you won't die, but when you get the bill, you wish you did. <laughs> so the, uh, the thing is that while you're at it, there's a bunch of other stuff you don't have to kill. You know, the planet we live on is conscious. And like us, she's populated by a lot of smaller creatures that depend on her. And so my sort of message is, please, you know, only a billion years ago, oh, only a hundred years ago, there were a billion people on planet Earth. Today, there's seven. If it's alive and it's not human, it's lucky. Leave it alone. So I want to show you one more rat snake. And there's something special about this one because we were talking about magic. Now, first of all, anybody know what this is? It is a rat snake, but anybody know what kind? Well, an easy guess would be it's a red rat snake, right? But the other name is corn snake. Why do they call it a corn snake? What does it eat? No. There are no vegetarian snakes called a corn snake because the underside looks like Indian corn. Isn't that cool? Don't ask me why they didn't have checkerboard in their tummies, I do not know. But here's my thing about magic. Do this with your spine. I'm not kidding. That's magic, if you ask me. Which brings me to another point. Because if I were to try to do that with something like, oh well, one of these, right? If I tie a knot in this thing, that's a big deal. I mean, especially a really tight one, I got a problem, a big one. There's nothing I can do about that that's not gonna take me a long time. Or perhaps not. Now, my father, had a really good sense of humor. God rest his soul, he was, uh, he was brilliant. And part of the reason I do what I do today was because of that. He was, uh, well, at the dinner table back in the day when he actually did the dinner table thing, my father and I would get going on something and we would riff back and forth, really high speed, mostly puns and wordplay, but I mean, it was amazing to watch. In fact, my mom and my sister would sit there, you know, open mouth laughing while we were doing it. And so, yeah, a knot can be a bad problem, but sometimes not. Which actually brings me back to a thought that happened between him and me. We were building a shed in the backyard, and there were a lot of these big planks that had, you know, holes in them. It's pretty normal, even with the high-grade lumber. And I said, Dad, what are these holes? He said, well, son, those are not holes. I said, Dad, if they're not holes, what are they? And when he was done laughing, he kind of winked at me. He said, well done. And it was the best attaboy I ever got. Thanks, you guys.
By the way, my father's name was George. <laughs> Daryl Sprout, everyone. <laughs>